This problem states the number of moles in 28.35 grams of the amino acid glycine is most close to what? So in this problem, we are asked to determine the number of moles of some amino acid with a molecular formula as well as a sample size. So we're working with moles, but we have to work our way back with the information that we're given. So let's go ahead and scratch out a solution to this particular problem and then walk one by one through each step of this solution to get to our final result. So the first step is going to be to define the molar mass of the chemical compound that's being sampled. We're going to then calculate the number of moles based on the defined mass of the sample. So it's generally speaking a two-step process. We're going to, to define that molar mass of the actual amino acid, which we're given a molecular formula for. And then we're going to take that molar mass or the molecular mass, molecular weight, look at the defined mass of the sample and reverse engineer our way into determining the number of moles that reside. So let's go ahead and start with step number one. Again, these are two steps within the process, each of which have their own sub process. So let's go ahead and sketch out what step one will look like. First, we will list the individual elements that make up the molecule. We'll define the number of moles of each element present in the molecular formula. We will use the periodic table to define the atomic weight for each element. We will calculate the total mass for each element. And we will sum up that mass of each element to define the molecular weight. So let's go ahead and start with step number one, where we will list the individual elements that make up the molecule. So as we like to do, we like to organize all of our work in table format. Not something I expect any of you to do on the FE exam. However, as we are preparing for the exam, it's good to keep everything organized, especially as a presenter, to ensure that you completely understand where this information is coming from, how it is being derived, so you can build those connections to be able to recall on the spot when the time is needed. So there is our general table that we'll be working with. We'll go ahead and list the individual elements of our molecule. Now we are told the molecular formula of glycine, which you see up there in the problem statement as C2H5O2N. So that means we have a carbon element, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Now we can define the number of moles of each element present in the molecular formula. Now, this is simply done through observation. How many moles of each element is present in that molecular formula that we are given? Well, looking at that molecular formula, we see that we have two moles of carbon. We have five moles of hydrogen. We have two moles of oxygen and a single mole of nitrogen. So now we can use the periodic table to define the atomic weight for each element. Starting with carbon, we hop back to page 55 of our NCES supplied reference handbook. We hone in on element number six, shows us we have an atomic weight of 12.011. We pull that back over, plug it into our table and move on to hydrogen. Hydrogen is element one with an atomic weight of 1.0079. So now we can look at oxygen, hopping back to page 55 of the NCES Supplied Reference Handbook. Element eight, that's oxygen, has an atomic weight of 15.999. Lastly, for nitrogen, we hop back to our periodic table of elements. We see that element number seven has an atomic weight of 14. 007. So there's our table up to this point. Now we can move on to step four where we will calculate the total mass for each element. So starting with car carbon, we have two moles. Each mole has an atomic weight of 12.011. That means the total mass is 24.022. 
That's two times 12.011. For hydrogen, we have five moles at 1.0079 for a total mass of 5.039. For oxygen, we have two moles for a total mass of 31.980. And of course, for nitrogen, we have a single mole. So the total mass is 14.007. So now we can sum up the mass of each element to define the molecular weight of this compound of glycine. So we're focusing in on that far right column. We sum it up to determine that the molecular weight is 75.048 grams per mole. So we now have our molar mass or our molecular weight of glycine of one mole of glycine, 75.048. So we can move on to step number two to calculate the number of moles based on the defined mass of the sample. Well, the problem statement tells us that the sample is 28.35 grams. So that's our defined mass. So if we have a 28.35 gram mass, and every mole of glycine is equal to 75.048 grams per mole, it looks like we have the information we need to reverse engineer into determining the number of moles. So what we will do is use this formula right here where, of course, it will define our moles of the compound in the sample. We will take the mass of the sample and divide that by the molar mass or the molecular weight of one mole of the compound. So we have our mass of the sample and we have our molar mass of the compound as well. So we just plug in that information, put it into our calculators to determine that the number of moles of this amino acid in this defined sample is 0.378 moles. So the correct answer is B, 0.378 moles.